business here on the EOVC for the city of Valdosta? Correct. There are two agenda items for the city of Valdosta. The first one is a planned development request. Thank you for being here tonight, and the meeting will be tomorrow night. Thursday night. Or Thursday night, Thursday night. And hang out. This is a request for planned development on property that is split zone between RP and DR10. Um, it is for proposed expansion to existing multifamily development that is already on this property. Um, the map on the screen shows the zoning patterns of the area. You can see it's mostly the RP. Um, this is very similar to the map in your original packet. There was a labeling error um, in your packet initially from the work session. It showed the residential property west of Oak Street to be R10 and in fact it's R15. So we've made that correction um, to go with the current packet, but it has no bearing or effect on the request. It's just something noteworthy on the map. Um, property based on area photograph from nine years ago shows a lot of vacant land and an existing older apartment complex on the eastern side and that dates back to about 1971, I think. Um, however, a few years ago, about the year 2011, the western half of this property was re uh, developed as a townhouse style apartment complex, uh, treated much like multifamily, the design as townhouses with interior garages. Um, there's a number of units there, and then a residential house that is facing North Oak Street. Um, the best place really to look is the site plan. It's in your packet. Uh, phase one was the townhouse development, which is shown as brown on here, and then Phase two is the full renovation of the existing apartment complex on the east, um, and they would like to add another building there. Um, we talked about this at length at your work session. I remember there was a, an allocation of density issue here. Um, the property on the western half of phase one uh, was not built at maximum density, actually about half. Um, and the property on the east side is actually slightly over the maximum allowable density of 18 units per acre. We're not real sure how that happened, other than perhaps a very large variance granted by city council in the early 1970s, um, or perhaps other land was involved. But when you add up all of the properties together, there's still several dwelling units short of the maximum density. The building <coughs> on the east side in phase two, one of the reasons they are over the density is because they are all one bedroom units, and there's 28 dwellings over there. Um, 27 of them one bedroom. Um, and there's physically plenty of more room to add another building. So what the applicant is wanting to do is simply maximize out the property based on a master plan in terms of 18 units per acre. If the lot lines did not already exist and there was simply one entity that owned everything through here, um, it would not be necessary to go through this process. Um, they can create that, which eventually they will, but in terms of timing, um, they would like to go ahead and get their master plan approved. And so plan development was the only course that would sort of speed up the process for them. So the proposal is simply to add a 10-unit building of apartments to the phase two area. And along with that will come some amenities, including an outdoor pool, indoor recreation, and so forth, for the entire complex and really tied together. Um, if you've been by the property, you will notice that the phase two area is already well underway in terms of renovation. Um, the buildings have been gutted, they're adding new fronts, and completely modernizing them, getting them into the current decade. Um, and we would like to, of course, continue with that, build a new building in the same style, and tie this together as one complex. It all looks like it was done at one time. Um, Planning-wise, of course, you have the two different zoning districts. Here's a look at the buildings. This is phase two under construction. You see it's sort of the large parking area out front, um, which is excessive pavement, and that is where the new building will go. And then this is not the best of pictures, but this is the back side of the townhouse units that are all to the west. And here's what the property looks like from Oak Street. Um, they've done a very, very good job, I think, of their new development. Um, of course, this is in the historic district. What they have done so far has gone through the Historic Preservation Commission has been approved, and they will eventually need to go through, I think it's on their agenda coming up, um, the new proposed building as well as an addition. In terms of plan development, um, it works uh, with some conditions that are there as recommended by staff. 
Uh, FACO is recommending approval, of course, and for finding consistent with the COP plan and the plan development standards. Um, there are several conditions. Mr. Chairman, I can read those into the record if you like, but there are six that are recommended to go along with this, uh, which is typical of any plan development request, including a timeline in the back. Um, one of the, really, the only major concern is the duplex property that faces Oak Street that should remain as a single family unit facing Oak without a driveway onto Oak Street. In other words, the streetscape of Oak Street remains intact as is. And simply the rear yard of this continues to be used as overflow parking, and the rest is what you see on the master plan. Any questions on this one? Yes, sir. On the DR10 portion, mm -hmm. um, you say it's used as existing overflow parking. The rear yard of it has been fenced off and is used as unpaid parking, as extra parking for the townhouses that are there. Um, the applicant owns all of that, has always owned it. But from Oak Street, you can't tell that that's what's going on, and the idea is to keep it that way. Is it going to remain unpaved, or is this is it going to be required to be open to the rest of the park on the side of the I think it can remain unpaved. It's how it's been used now. Um, <coughs> and if it's not used, then it doesn't add burden, as much burden, at least to their stormwater system. Um, if the city engineer feels differently, it's given to the permitting stage, and that can be addressed at that time. But it's not required parking, so technically it's not required to be paid for this kind of use anymore. Have the six conditions been discussed with the applicant? Uh, yes. Uh, we've had meetings, pre out meetings with them. Um, the one that we've not gone into detail, at least with me, is, let's see, is condition number four. The development shall adhere to agreements with the city engineering department relating to management <coughs> stormwater entering the site from the north. Um, it's a break where the two phases meet. is sort of a low spot. There is existing drainage pattern of drainage coming from the north, is the way I understand it. And it's ponding up there a little bit during heavy rains. It's something the engineering department is aware of. And they will address that engineering-wise as part of the planning review for this project. And to my knowledge, the engineering department has already discussed this with them. Um, so as they prepare those plans, they take that into account. What had happened is when the townhouses were built, that rear part of the site was raised a little bit to allow the buildings, and it sort of blocked the drainage flow. And that became evident of the very first heavy rain event. So there's a way to, I think, route the water around and fix it. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Turn it over to the audience participation. Anyone here would like to speak in favor of this request? If anyone would like to speak in favor, please come forward. I'm the uh, architect for the project, and Matt is the owner of the project. And we're here to answer any questions. <coughs> um, I'd like to pick up where Matt left off about the uh, concern about the uh, storm water. Uh, our engineer has addressed that in plans that are ready to be submitted to the city, and they're actually putting in a catch basin in that back corner, and that will catch that uh, water that's being dammed up uh, from the original construction. So that'll take care of that. So we are indeed addressing uh, the uh, storm water. Uh, the, uh, all of the storm water will be uh, underground detention. So you won't be looking at a detention pond or anything like that. Uh, the appearance of the uh, gigantic asphalt parking lot is going to be done away with quite a bit with the uh, insertion of this 10 unit building amenities building. Uh, as Matt said, uh, uh, the owner is already well under construction with the original 28 units. Uh, they've come along real well and he would like to continue on with the uh, 10 unit 
building in the amendments. So we've got some renderings here that show you know, what the project's going to look like. I think y'all got them in the office of transportation. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you again, Tom. Anyone have questions of the presenter? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone here to speak against this request? Anyone here to speak against this request? Please come forward. Okay, gentlemen, I'll turn it back over to the commission. Any, any questions? Um, staff? Move on with a vote on this. If you're ready to do so. I'd like to call for a vote, please. Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, recommend approval of this request, finding it consistent with the comprehensive plan, and that the uh, recommendation also include the six conditions mentioned in the uh, presentation. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Mr. Defendant. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. Any opposed? Same sign. Thank you all very much, gentlemen. Again, about it. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, Matt.